Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bimzy Dev, and today we're going to be learning about Unity's new input action system. Let's get straight into the video. I'll start out by creating a new project for my test inputs. I'm using the Universal Render Pipeline as the template for this tutorial. Using Unity's old input system, we'd want to navigate to our project settings where we could look at our input manager and see all of the axes that we have defined. All of these axes correspond to a separate input that we can use whilst creating our games. However, this input system is flawed, as it doesn't support modularity across multiple devices. This is where Unity's new input actions come into play to address these issues. Also, once set up, the implementation into your games will be a lot easier and save you a bunch of time. So let's jump straight into it and learn how to use these new input actions. We'll want to navigate to our package manager so we can download and install the new input system. So once you're in your package manager, make sure that we select the Unity registry in the top left. And then select the new input system and click install. After having the install complete, Unity will force you to do a restart on your project. Back in our Unity scene, the first thing I'll do is create a new canvas in my scene and that'll generate a new event system. If we go ahead and select our new event system, it'll give us some warnings. All we need to do is click the button to replace our new event system modules. All that's doing is updating how Unity handles click inputs and all the other interactions that the UI needs to be aware of. The next thing we'll do is navigate to our project settings from the edit tab. We'll want to go to the new input systems package and then we want to click the big button to create a new settings asset. This will generate a new file into our assets root directory, which we don't really need to do much with for now. It sort of sets up all the basics we need to start implementing inputs into our game. I'll navigate to my scripts folder where I'll create a new folder for test inputs. And inside there, I'm going to create a new input action. If we double click this file, it's going to open up a new window that we've never seen before. This is where we're going to be managing all of our inputs going forward. Now you'll notice straight away there's three main components to this window, the action maps, the actions, and the properties. We'll go into a little bit more depth into these a little bit later. But for now, you'll want to make sure that you tick the auto save button. At its core, an action map is a collection of different actions or inputs that a player will be able to take. So if in your game you want to have a character controller, a car controller, and a plane controller, you would create a different action map for each of these different things. Essentially, it just defines a set of inputs that correspond to the actions each of these individual controllers can take. So to demonstrate how we'd use these actions in our game, I'm going to use this new action input, change it to button press, and we're going to integrate this into a script. But first, we need to give our action a binding. So I'm going to select binding, and then I'm going to set its path to be the K key on my keyboard. You can assign as many bindings as you want to one action. In our scene, I've created a test inputs game object, and I've already gone ahead and added the player input game object to that. Any game object that you want to have interact with Unity's new input action system will need to have this player input game object on it. Within my player input, I've got the action map set to the player that we created before. You'll notice in our behavior, we've got it set to send messages. This will mean that inside of our code, we'll be able to receive these messages and do something with them. You'll notice that the player input has generated an on button press message, which translates back to that action that we've created. Before we jump into the code, I'm gonna create a new action, which will represent something similar to the axes from the old input system. I'll bind those keys to A and D on my keyboard, and then I'll just give that one a name. Now what's important here is that we have our binding type set to one dimensional axis. Inside the code, I've created a new class called input tester. I'm going to start out by creating a new public method called on button press. This is that message that the player input is sending our class. As a parameter, I'm going to add an input value and call that one value. And then all we need to do is check if this value parameter is being pressed. Inside of that if statement, I'm going to add a debug log where I'm just going to output value is pressed. Now when we hit the K key on our keyboard and the game's playing, we should see the debug log statement appear in our console. Back inside of our class, let's add the second example for the axes. So I'm going to create another public method. We'll call that one on horizontal. 
passing in the same input value. However, this time we're not going to need an if statement. We're just going to call debug.log, adding some text that says horizontal. And then we're going to want to get the value of our value parameter. So let's call value get, passing in float as the type. And that'll just retrieve the float value of our input. Back in Unity, when we hit the A and D buttons, this should output it in a debug log statement. There we go. We've got two great examples of how we can use the new input actions for our games in Unity. The next thing I'm going to do is show you a practical example of how we can convert the old input system to the new input system. So I'm going to grab the character controller from one of my previous tutorials and I'm going to convert that input system now. There'll be a link in the description down below if you want to follow along with this process. So the first thing I'll do is remove the example assets and then create a floor. I'll drag the old character controller into my scene and then I'm just going to fix up the material so it's not pink. Now back within our test inputs, I'm going to create a new input action called move. I'm going to change its action type from button to value and also its control type to vector2. Then we'll want to click the plus and add 2D vector composite. This will allow our binding type to facilitate WASD movement. So we'll go ahead and assign those WASD keys to each of the corresponding control types. With that done, I'm going to create another action for the jump. So we'll call that one jump, and then I'm going to leave the action type as button, and I'm going to change the binding type to spacebar. And finally, we'll want to make sure that we have a player input on our character controller game object. Let's go ahead and fill in all those parameters, selecting the test input, making sure the default map is player. And with all that done, I think we should be good to go to jump into the code. So at the top of my character controller class, I'm going to create a new vector2 and call it move. Then I'm going to create two new methods, one called onMove, passing in an input value, and also onJump, also passing in an input value. These two methods should correspond to the messages that our player input is going to be sending. Within our onJump method, we're going to check if the value is pressed. And then within our move method, we're going to want to set our move variable to be equal to value get passing in a vector2. Now at the top of our update loop, I'm going to replace the input.getAxes methods with our move values. Then I'm also going to copy the code for our jump, deleting that if statement and moving that code into our onJump method. With that done, that's all the code we should need for our new character controller. So back in the Unity scene, we can see straight away that the new input system we've implemented works. As examples out of the way, I hope you learned how to use Unity's new input action system. If you need any help with anything or have any questions, feel free to join my new community Discord. A link for that one will be in the description down below. If you like the content, feel free to drop a like or a subscribe as it lets me know that you're enjoying what you see. Thanks for watching and have a great day.